Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I got another furnace foray for you that was mostly inspired by the comments on the last one. The main complaint people had was that the shulker boxes that you would put into the system actually get destroyed and you would need to provide new shulker boxes to collect the items in the end. So the reason why I did this was for simplicity's sake. I wanted to make the simplest 320 furnace array and this made it a lot simpler. Also, despite my efforts to try to make the system as simple as possible, as usual, some people still complained in the comments that the system is in fact not simple. But what should I say to that? I mean, somehow you need to distribute items to 320 furnaces every 10 seconds. There's really no way around this. So, yeah, it doesn't get much simpler than that, really. Maybe if you look for a simple furnace array, I can interest you in this model here, but I don't think you need to make a video about this. Anyway, I had another plan for a furnace array already, and this time I made it in a way that the shulker box actually gets preserved. And not just preserved, the output of the furnace array actually preserves the contents of the shulker box. So if you put a half-filled shulker box into the system, you're also going to get a half-filled shulker box at the output. Also, things do get a bit more complicated if you want a sophisticated furnace array. As you can see here, there's definitely a lot more redstone involved. I reduced the amount of furnaces from 320 to 160, which is still quite fast. You can smelt 57,000 items per hour. And in case you want the full 320 or even more, I made the system also 5 wide tidable. So you can just expand it. And it's just then a matter of distributing the shulker boxes over the furnaces, since the contents of the shulker boxes will be preserved. All right, time to test this out and I can explain how it works. So I prepared three different boxes that are either partially filled with different item types, fully filled with one item type and fully filled with different items. All right, let's start the furnace array. So you just need to put your shulker boxes into this chest here and it will automatically start. All right, there we go. So the first shulker box is getting dispensed and then a hopper minecart picks up exactly 320 items or however, yeah, much there is left in the shulker box. All right, there we go, five stacks. So fully loading the hopper minecart actually takes 16 seconds. That's also the reason why I'm using the waterlocked rails here, because this way the hopper below the minecart would pick up two items instead of just one. And that actually lets me send a minecart every 20 seconds instead of every 10 seconds. So just for reference, it takes 10 seconds to smelt an item. And as you can see, this is perfect time. So after 20 seconds, the next item is launched. Then, yeah, speaking about perfect timing, also the hopper minecart that would pick up the items out of the furnace array is perfectly timed. So exactly 208 ticks after the first minecart, this one is launched to pick up the items out of the furnace. So we can see that maybe here if I click on this. Yeah, as soon as the item is smelted, the hopper minecart below would pick it up. That's kind of neat uh, in case you have different item types because the furnace will only start smelting if the output slot is emptied. So this is a system I didn't have in my previous furnace array, the easy version, but it wasn't a really big deal because their hopper minecart was sent every 10 seconds anyway, so the, it would have auto-synchronized after a while. But by putting in a little bit more effort which I did here, so the minecart is actually slowed down here by the powder snow and it actually goes a bit through uh, waterlocked rails already and the normal rails here. We can also get this timing. As you can see here, yeah, perfectly timed every time. We also need a hopper minecart at the bottom every 10 seconds instead of every 20. That's why yeah, we got the system here, so the first hopper minecart drives over the detector rail and then activates the micro dispenser a second time and another one is launched. So this way we have yeah, twice the amount of hopper minecarts at the bottom. I can also try to explain some of the redstone here or the basic idea behind it. So as soon as we put a shulker box into the system, we take an output from this shulker box dispenser and the shulker box itself. So if either we have a shulker box in there or items are in the shulker box, then this 20 second hopper clock here is running and would launch a new minecart um, yeah, every 20 seconds. And of course, uh, after a while, we have to also break the shulker box. Um, we detect if it's empty, if this basically comparator turns off, 
and then this piston is lowered here. So every time we launch a new minecart, we try to power through this block here, and in case it's lowered because the shulker box is empty, then we actually activate this piston here. You can only see it from the back. Um, that's in front of the shulker box. It breaks it, and then the dispenser also gets triggered to dispense a new one. Let's actually check how much items are left. If I do a quick tick warp, we can maybe catch this. It's more. Okay, then there's two stacks left. So there we go. This time, the shulker box will be broken. There we go. Also, every time we actually break the shulker box, we send another signal to the back that shoots shears into cobwebs. So what is this about? So this is basically just a delay circuit that would also work if you break a shulker box every 20 seconds and it would have multiple shears in the cobwebs. Um, so this basically just keeps track of when the shulker box was broken and then it basically simulates the time that the last hopper minecart will take until it arrives back here at the unloading station and yeah, the last items are unloaded. You can see here, items will be incoming there. Immediately get picked up by the hopper minecart uh, and get distributed to four droppers that, oh, there we just saw it, when the shulker box got broken. So we got four droppers to try to shoot items into the shulker box um, at yeah, up to 72,000 items per hour. So loading a shulker box with four droppers is basically the fastest normal shulker box load you can make. I'm not quite sure, maybe you can do something with explosions, but it's actually not necessary here. We only need four anyway. So yeah, there's only six sides to a shulker box you can load it from. Four are used by the droppers here. On top we got the dispenser to dispense a new box. And at the bottom we have a sticky piston with an open fence gate on top. It would break the box and then there's a hopper minecart stuck inside of the sticky piston that doesn't get pushed up as well because it's yeah, partially under this trapdoor here and gets blocked there. So this way the items would go into this chest in the end. Alright, so let's check the boxes we got. So the order of the items is not preserved. So this was the box shop box. Just gonna order the items real quick. So there we go. You see exactly the same items are in this shulker box. Then the next one was the glass. Sand was melted and the golden iron box. There we go. Technically, you probably also make a system where the order of the items would be preserved, but this would get a bit more complicated again and don't think it's really necessary. Okay, so as you can see, we got 15, oh sorry, 14 stacks of gold and 13 stacks of iron. So I put a couple boxes in there that are filled with five stacks of raw pork chop. You can also see that this box is actually transported to the output. So as soon as the black box is broken, the hopper would pick it up. And then it's getting dispensed by the dropper into some powder snow. Um, basically just to align the item here in the water stream. It's getting flushed over and falls down into the hopper here. And this is the dispenser that picks up the boxes and dispenses them then. So this way you don't need to worry about yeah, putting shulker boxes into the output system because it's just gonna keep reusing um, the boxes we put in. So you will never have too many that you need to somehow get rid of or too little. Yeah, just need to keep, I think, one uh, available here. Okay, let's also take a look at this um, shear dispensing system with the cobwebs. It's a neat timer here. It's not often that you can actually use those. So let's take a look at the box and it just got broken, but we can do a quick tip warp. So as you can see, um, we need to break it exactly at the time when the shulker box is filled. As you can see, this is perfectly timed. There's very little time in between because the next items will arrive. So every 10 seconds, a new hopper minecart would arrive here. That gets unloaded and the items are put in there. Uh, but we constantly keep triggering the droppers here on the side, um, which would be a problem normally for uh, a shulker box unloader. 
because sometimes it would happen that it would have items in there, they would spit out items while there is no shulker box when a new one is getting placed. But since everything is perfectly timed, you can just keep this clock running um, without having to worry about this ever happening. So you can see here in the output box, perfectly always five stacks of pork chop and no loose items are just getting thrown out. In order to achieve this precise timing here of the cobwebs, it's actually also important Maybe you didn't notice that you need to shoot in the items from on top into the cobwebs and it would slowly glide through. If you would shoot the items in from the side like this, found this out via testing, there could be up to five seconds difference. All right, so the last thing you need to worry about is fuel. And of course, there's a lot of options, bamboo, carpet tubing, lava buckets, etc. I personally prefer charcoal, as I said in the last video, so you could easily use the system exactly like this with coal, charcoal, blaze rods, coal blocks, or kelp blocks. So you have alternatives in case you just want to use bamboo, although you need to use over 200,000 power of bamboo items. You can always put your either bone milled bamboo farm or a huge bamboo farm on the side here. Just have a water stream running next to the hoppers and supply it with bamboo. It's also a possibility, but I use the yeah, charcoal system. So we get two shulker box unloaders. Uh, so you can put in your, yeah, Charcoal here at the top, and then there's just a hopper minecart at the bottom, picking up the items out of the double chest that gets launched every time a shulker box um, is getting broken. So this way it's guaranteed that the furnaces are supplied with enough coal. And there's two more things I want to talk about quickly. The first one is fuel efficiency. So this furnace array was not optimized for fuel efficiency, because in my opinion, if you're at the stage where you want to build such a furnace array, you're probably in a position where you don't need to worry about that anymore anyway. Um, but uh, here's the downside. So this system always waits until the shulker box is fully emptied, then launches the next minecart. So if you have a fully filled box with 27 stacks, then it would launch five filled minecarts and the sixth one only has two stacks in there. Um, so in order to use the basically a full speed of the furnace array, you would need to put in shulker boxes with 25 stacks of items. Um, so it's a bit of a downside. I don't like this myself, but it makes things easy again. I still wanted to make this yeah, as simple as possible with this approach. Um, so you could get around this by filling the hopper minecart, for example, with 144 items and then also using 144 furnaces. Uh, but then you would need to you know, keep track of how many items are in the minecart, then move it away from the shulker box, etc. So this would make it again a bit more complicated. And the last thing I want to talk about is lag. Uh, so this furnace array is definitely not a big deal when it comes to lag. So there's a couple hoppers that are, are being used, which contribute a tiny amount of lag, but it's really not a big deal. So I can run this game. Um, let's think about it really quick. Yeah, about 35 times faster than usual. We could optimize this a little bit, but I would argue it's not necessary for 99% of the players. So what you can do is actually, if you're not using the furnace array, you could lock the hoppers here in the back and turn this on and off when you use the furnace array. But it definitely wouldn't help much. And yeah, it would be trivial to add if this is important to you. You can also do that real quick. I'm just gonna lock all the hoppers here on the side and then we can compare. All right, so and if the hoppers are not locked, they will contribute 0.517 ms. So this is basically as expected, but it's not really the difference here in between. It's the absolute number. So it's only 0.4 ms you gain this way, which is not a lot. So as you can see, there's really no reason to get a headache over the lag that is caused by this furnace array. In case you want to optimize it, it would be actually as simple as taking an output from this pulse extender and just running a redstone line here on the side. So this will already be all the automation that is required in case you really want to do it. Okay. And even if you would scale this up, let's say you want to build this yeah, just 30 times to have 4,800 furnaces, then it's also questionable if you need to worry about lag optimization because you would probably want to build this furnace array or a huge furnace array in the area anyway. We have nothing else. The only time you actually go to your furnace array is while you're using it. So why would you lag optimize a furnace array that is usually never loaded when it's not being used? So yeah, lag optimization for furnace arrays is something you can do, but I feel like yeah, it's overrated. All right, so that's the water locked rail furnace array with precise shulker box return. 
I tested the system a lot, so in case you want to build it, fairly certain there shouldn't be any issues with it. So there's also a world download in the video description. So just if you yeah, want to build this as well, just going to tell you what's actually important here. Um, this uh, layout here with normal rails or golden rails is actually important. So just don't replace like a normal rail with a golden rail because then the timings yeah, wouldn't match anymore. So those 208 ticks between top and bottom minecart. In case you also don't like this setup here with the 80 furnaces in a row because it's rather long furnace array uh, so you want to change it maybe like um, two slices with 40 furnaces in a row then you would also make sure that you um, yeah, consider two things so the first one is for this yeah, unloading of the 208 ticks that the bottom so the unloading rails always match the top if you look at here at the end so if the yeah, top rail is waterlogged as you can see this is just basically a perfect mirror and the bottom rail is also waterlogged and so on also maybe one more note actually we're not here for an extra block because if you have the yeah the mine cuts here on the, on the corner and the hopper below then weird things happen and the top and bottom didn't match anymore that's why i went out of one block further uh yeah in case you want to change this layer completely then you would also need to consider that it might take a mine cut a bit longer to arrive back there and then this cobweb delay system might not work anymore needs to be adjusted as well which is definitely doable, but it requires some annoying testing. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!